Peter Ducey questions Karine Jean-Pierre regarding rising inflation. President Joe Biden says that if Republicans get elected, inflation is going to get worse. And lastly, we have a new horror film that quite literally is sending moviegoers to the hospital. All of that and more here on The Ball Brat Show. Welcome to The Bald Brad Show. It is Tuesday morning, October 18th, and as always, I couldn't be happier than to spend these fine mornings doing The Bald Brad Show and hanging out with all of you, my friends and true American patriots, where we come together as a community of conservatives and Republicans. We go over the stories of the day and bring you all the news and information you need to know about. So if you want to join us here at The Bald Brad Show, we hope that you do, hit the subscribe button. If you're over at Rumble, hit the plus and give us a comment down below. And if you're listening on any of the podcast airwaves, Apple, Google, Spotify, heck folks, you can find us and listen to us anywhere and everywhere. Leave us a lovely five-star review. Not only do you be helping a conservative, but most importantly, you'd be supporting getting conservative thought and ideas out there to new viewers who haven't seen our content or our channel. So again, support us by hitting that subscribe button, leaving us a five-star review hitting that like button, as well as double check to make sure that bell notification icon's clicked because we have almost 17,000 subscribers and 85% of you have not been notified or are not being notified when we upload or go live, which is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with Supernatural Saturdays and a sprinkling of politics on Sunday. So be notified by hitting that bell icon. Now, with that being said, we're jumping into our lead story of the day, with Peter Ducey questioning Karine Jean-Pierre about this rising inflation and basically how President Joe Biden just blaming anybody and everybody rather than the administration themselves. Let's see what Karine has to say about all this. Thank you, Karine. Uh, following up on something you said earlier, if President Biden's top domestic priority is inflation, why doesn't he have more to show for it? So the president understands and we've talked about this many times, um, that uh, inflation um, is an issue, high, high cost. Cost is an issue for the American people. And so he's been very clear about making that his number one economic priority. And he has done the work. And he's done the work with congressional Democrats. When you think about the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is uh, going to lower the cost uh, for our seniors, millions and millions of seniors across the country, when you think about that $2,000 uh, cap on their own uh, Medicare prescription, uh, when you think about the thousands of dollars that our seniors pay a month, now that's going to be $2,000 a year. That is the work that congressional Democrats and Republic and, and, and uh, congressional Democrats and the president has done. Republicans did not vote for that at all. And what Republicans want to do is that they want to repeal that very historic piece of legislation that is also going to lower energy costs, that is also going to help fight uh, climate change. They want to get rid of it. So there is a contrast that we are going to make, which is how Republicans are actually going to make things worse, and Democrats want to do the opposite. And Time out. Time out. Republicans are going to make things worse? I don't think so, lady. And I would like to point out some of those things that she mentioned about lowering cost for senior citizens. That is a good thing. But there's 330 roughly million people living in the United States that are all dealing with rising energy costs, rising gas prices, rising grocery bills. Like every sector of basically the economy has risen, which is why you have inflation at 8.2%. The CPI went up and she's going to spin it and blame the Republicans for all this when they have all three branches of government. You can't make this up. And if you notice, she's hyper-focusing on a small subset of people and it is good of which what those people are getting, meaning the senior citizens, but what about everybody else? You haven't done anything, but it's the number one priority, you guys, in the economy. Number one, and you can't even fix that. Make things a little easier. I just talked about the hearing aids, which is going to help 30 million, uh, 30 million Americans across the country. But who exactly thinks the president is doing a good job on inflation? Because we've got a new poll that finds he receives his lowest job ratings on inflation, net negative 
38 points. We understand that there are challenges that are uh, in front of us here in this country. That is why the president has taken action to lower costs. Think about gas prices. You think about health care, uh, health care uh, premiums. You think about Medicare again beating special interests so that we can lower costs, so Medicare can actually be able to lower costs for senior citizens. When you think about all of these steps that he has taken to make sure that that is happening, Republicans. She only listed a couple of things. I mean, and again, she's hyper focusing on some certain subgroup of the population rather than the population of the whole that is dealing with this inflation. And you're even then you're going on a super subset of even what targeting inflation is in terms of health care costs. So you're not even talking about what everybody else is predominantly dealing with. So you're even getting more hyper subset in terms of a demographic of which the population you're talking about. But hey, you know what? She's going to go on and complain to Republicans. Everything is Republicans' fault, Putin's fault, China's fault, Taiwan's fault, Ukraine's fault. Hell, the ghost out there, out in the ether's fault. You can blame it on everybody and everybody. Republicans in Congress refuse. They refuse to be partners with us on this. They refuse to help us. You think about the American Rescue Plan that has helped create an economy that is indeed resilient, and that created jobs. They the refuse American to rescue. help. They refuse to help. You have all three branches of government. You don't need our help. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Why do they keep saying, well, they're not willing to help us. They're not willing to do this. You have control, again, of all three branches. You don't need our help. You just can't get it done because you guys can't figure it out. But it's your number one issue. You're gonna make this your top priority, which by the way, I think that Joe Biden is going on vacation again soon, but he's gonna do everything he can right now to help Democrats win in the midterms. He's gonna travel around the country, spend taxpayer dollars, eat chocolate chip ice cream, and not worry about the economy, not worry about inflation, not worry about CPI, not worry about immigration, not worry about China, Taiwan, not worry about Russia, Ukraine. They're just gonna blame Republicans for everything because the midterms are coming up. Have the president's economic advisors told him that the general consensus now is that the American Rescue Plan has contributed to inflation. Look, Secretary um, Yellen, who is incredibly well respected, as you know, in the uh, economic space, has spoken to this. So I will leave her words uh, speak to that to the to, to the statement that you just made. Here's the thing. What the president has done, the issues that he has worked on, when you think about Medicare, we think about health care, you think about energy costs, you think about Inflation Reduction Act, uh, you think about the CHIPS Act, they are popular. They are popular with the American people. They understand. The American people understand what these pieces of legislation that, that we have worked so hard to get across the line that are now law is going to change, change the lives of American people. Now, is there work, is there work, work to be done? There's always more work to be done, but we are making, we are taking the steps to do that. Again, congressional Republicans, they are doing nothing, absolutely nothing. They want to repeal. They want to take away the advances that we have made. Go ahead, Kelly. Wow, ahead. she moved on real quick to somebody else there because, you know, Peter Ducey was locked and loaded to just raise the fact that the Inflation Reduction Act isn't going to reduce inflation at all. You're struggling with your own party members to get it passed. You didn't even need Republicans for it, but you're going to blame Republicans for anything and everything. You're hyper-focused on these hearing aids and lowering insurance costs, health care costs for senior citizens, which is a good thing, but we're talking about another 300 million people that are dealing with inflation, rising energy costs, but you're going to talk about how you knocked that down, but yet you're going to blame Putin before for rising costs, even though 40% of gas prices increased before Putin ever invaded Ukraine, but you don't want to talk about that. It's just amazing that you're not having the mainstream media capitalize on all this hypocrisy. But when Donald Trump was in office, that's all they did. The guy just threw out a tweet and it was like news headlines for a week on something so small. I mean, literally, he blew up the airways because his hand was shaking, drinking a glass of water. But you have Joe Biden hitting golf ball backwards, walking up the stairs, falling multiple times, getting lost all the time, rambling, spinning stories of which aren't even true about his own life fighting with a teleprompter week in and week out. You got this lady chauffeuring a bunch of lies as well week in and week out. I mean, everybody in that room could have a field day with her in terms of the hypocrisy of what's taking place. And they're going to have the cojones to say that Republicans are going to make it worse if they are elected. It's just, I just don't know anybody that would actually believe in this, but here's the problem is you have roughly in the mid 40% of Americans that would still vote for this guy and that actually think that he's doing a good job. But the way they talk to us, it's just as if we are all idiots. 
And that moves us into our next story of the day. Again, if you haven't hit that like button, hit that subscribe and like button. It does yeoman work with supporting the show here. Well, as we've covered, Joe Biden went to California, at least on the West Coast for this specific one. It was eating chocolate chip ice cream on our Sunday episode. And he's not worried about the economy, but he's worried about the global economy as a whole. When you got inflation going through the roof, as we just spoke about, you got CPI going through the roof, energy costs going through the roof. Hell, the ice cream that he's literally eating is up 13.6 or 13.9% from last year, but he's not worried about anything. He just thinks we're all idiots. So President Joe Biden thinks you're an idiot. And based on the president's comments last week as well with Karine Jean-Pierre, the energy secretary and the transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, it's abundantly clear his team is ready to blame Republicans for any economic ruin after the midterm elections, despite the fact that his economic policies over the past 20 months are behind the current skyrocketing costs. But we have a clip here of Joe Biden himself saying, I mean, it's not long, it's only four seconds, but saying, again, if it's going to get worse, it's going to be because of Republicans themselves that are going to cause it in some way, shape or form as to how, I don't know, but let's go ahead and roll it. Republican wins, inflation is going to get worse. It's that simple. It's that simple. Republican wins, inflation is going to get worse. It's that simple. I just had to play it twice because it's remarkable that <laughs> that if Republicans win the midterms, inflation is going to get worse. And, and like I said, there's a subset of Americans that are fully on board with this. They actually believe it. Well, Biden's declaration came the same day that the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, the CPI that we were referring to in the first segment, report that inflation was hotter than expected in September and rose to 8.2% year over year, meaning he is beating out not just the expectations for CPI, but also inflation as well. That is now the 12th straight month with inflation year over year about 6%, meaning he's not even anywhere close to where he should be, but somehow he's blaming this on Republicans and saying again, if it's gonna get worse, it's their fault. Look, here's his tweet from October 16th. If Republicans in Congress get their way, prices will go up and inflation will get worse. It's that simple, which you saw him echo in that clip itself. The guy's not here with us, folks. I mean, either is his freaking administration, Pete Buttigieg, Janet Yellen, Karine Jean-Pierre. I mean, everybody else is touting this whole message. Somehow Biden wants you to believe that Democrats have a handle on inflation and GP will only add to the worries. Of course, though, throughout 2021, America was also experiencing inflation, albeit at a slightly slower rate. For example, in July 2021, the U.S. saw an annualized rate of inflation of 5.4%. The president claimed that the surging costs were due to a roaring economy, but that it wouldn't last long. <laughs> Mind you, if you go back, all of us were talking about how it's going to get worse, that we're probably going to head into a recession. Everybody that had half a brain saw it. We all saw this coming, especially when you saw how much money they pumped in the economy because of COVID-19 with these stimulus checks. And then you got the Inflation Reduction Act talking. They wanted to, to just continue to throw out this infrastructure package, which is pumping the money full of the economy. And then they can't fathom why it would increase three, almost 4%. Quote, some folks have raised worries that this could be a sign of persistent inflation, but that's not our view. Our experts believe, and the data shows that most of the price increases we've seen are, were expected and expected to be temporary. Mm. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? Because now we're going a month after month here, 12 consecutive months rather, of inflation. And it seems like it's going to be some time here until it gets down. If you notice, the Federal Reserve has been increasing interest rates by 0.75%. And it's only decreasing it by a point of a percent or sometimes 0.2% of inflation after each month. So it's not having that much of an effect. And again, it's all a balancing beam because we are in a I guess a small recession, but if they screw this up, it could dive into a deep, deep recession and really mess things up. So it is a balancing beam act from the Federal Reserve. It was not temporary and in fact only worsened after those comments. In December 2021, Biden predicted America was at a peak of inflation. Clearly, that was false, folks. Guy doesn't have a clue. What Biden never mentions is the data indicates his party's almost $2 million, sorry, million, wow, I'm not even close. $2 trillion stimulus called the American Rescue Plan, which Kareem Jean-Pierre loves to talk about all the time, passed in the spring of 2021, deserves blame for high inflation. Larry Summers, a Harvard professor, so the guy's not an idiot, and former economic advisor to President Barack Obama, warned that the package would overstimulate the economy and cause inflation. Leftists dismissed his concerns. He's a part of your party. Freaking A. He called it, we all called it, but somehow the Biden administration just missed it. He called the bill the most irresponsible economic decision in more than 40 years. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. It's amazing how you had 
Barack Obama having a terrible foreign policy decision with the Iran nuclear deal. You go to Trump. Trump tries to fix everything that Obama basically destroyed. And then now you got you got Biden in office destroying everything that Trump created and fixed and screws everything up and tries to implement certain policies, meaning the IE, the Iran nuclear deal, tries to put that back in place on top of this irresponsible economic package. So now we got a bleep storm happening, not just on a global level, but also on a domestic level. Now it looks like Summers was right. Never one to take responsibility. The president has also blamed another person for his economic woes, which is Russian President Vladimir Putin. After Russia invaded Ukraine, the Biden administration shifted the blame for the rising cost of goods, calling it the Putin price hike, which we've covered at length here on the Bald Brad Show. In June, in June, Biden claimed, I understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. I mean, he is still touting that message. Everything's a challenge to them. At no point have we had one single crisis here in America. They still think the border is a challenge, even though since he's taken office, you have about 5 million illegal immigrants have crossed through the U.S.-Mexico border in 18 months. It's just a challenge, folks. They got everything under control. He's going out freaking eating chocolate, chocolate chip ice cream left and right, taking vacations, not having a clue what the hell is going on. And we got two more years of this stuff. Again, in June, Biden claimed that understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. Today's inflation report confirms what Americans already know. He continued, Putin's price hike is hitting America hard. And if you recall, in June 10th, he had this to say. We got this from C-SPAN here. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. It's just, it's just getting old. It's getting old with this whole narrative and this push from this administration. Let's go ahead and roll it. Today's inflation report confirmed what Americans already know. Putin's price hike is hitting America hard. Gas prices at the pump, energy and food prices account for half of the monthly price increases since May. Inflation outside of energy and food, what the economists call core inflation, moderated the last two months. Not enough, but it moderated, it's come down. And we need it to come down much more quickly. My administration is going to continue to do everything we can to lower the prices to the American people, and the Congress has to act, and they have been of late. Okay, again, who has control of Congress? The Democrats. Who has control of the executive branch? The Democrats. <laughs> they can't figure it out. This is from June 10th, by the way. June 10th, he said this. They still can't figure it out. But Karine Jean-Pierre is going to sit on that podium each and every week, tout a bunch of nonsense that Americans, roughly in the 40 percentile range, still believe in, that are still going to vote for this guy. Again, I don't know what it is for people not doing the research when voting. I get that there's people that just hate Trump. I get it partially, but what Trump did was good. He said a bunch of asinine things. The stuff he pushed through was good. You got a knucklehead here as president that says asinine things and does asinine things. I think the guy that was on Twitter for a while that got censored and removed was a way better president named Donald J. Trump than this guy that doesn't have a clue on what's going on, that you can go back to any film and see that it was wrong, where you have President Donald Trump, when we go back to his film, he was right when he talked about gas prices hitting seven or eight dollars. If you got Biden in office, that you're going to have record inflation. I mean, you can go after these old clips of President Donald Trump saying things and coming true where you got this knucklehead, President Joe Biden, saying things that aren't coming true, not fixing anything, making things worse. And I love I'm gonna end the segment here. I just love the fact that Karine Jean-Pierre is using energy as an example of an accomplishment from the Biden administration. Let that one sink in because just the other week, you had the Saudis giving two middle fingers to Joe Biden by going, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to basically limit oil production by a million barrels per day. And then you have Joe Biden go, oh, nobody Fs with the Biden on a hot mic. And then the Saudis are like, hey, you know what? Let's make, let's make it two million. <laughs> let's make it two million barrels. So he's getting screwed left and right. And there's a quid pro quo there. A lot of people have been talking about that of President Joe Biden potentially going to remove arms and kind of threatening the Saudis with it. But this would be the second or third time on tape, on recording that we have President Joe Biden supposedly making a quid pro quo, but you don't have anybody in Congress wanting to investigate it. But you got freaking Donald Trump having a conversation with Lazinski, I believe is the guy's name, Zelensky, on the phone. And it just opens up a phone call, opens up an entire investigation on a quid pro quo. Go figure. Well, our last news story of the day, again, if you haven't clicked that like button, do us a favor and click it now. It really does help spread the word and make our channel grow. Help and support is always appreciated. Well, moviegoers, folks, it's been a while since we had a horror film like this. Moviegoers are literally vomiting and fainting during a new gory horror flick called Terrifier 2. I haven't seen this thing, but now I'm going to because I love horror films. Not everybody in my friend circle likes them, so I'm probably gonna have to watch it by myself. But this new horror movie 
that's in theaters is so gory fans are fainting and vomiting while watching it <laughs> that is awesome i'm sure many of you aren't horror fans but hey we got a big following for supernatural saturday so heck we might have a bunch of horror fans that love aliens that love uh ghosts the paranormal the supernatural if you haven't checked that out, folks, check out Saturdays. It's an opportunity for us to step aside from the politics and the craziness of the world and just have a day to have some fun together, exploring the paranormal, the unexplained, and the supernatural. Well, Terrifier 2 is a relatively small production released last weekend on only 700 screens. It's earned $2.3 million so far, but even with these humble profits, the slasher flick is making headlines for how audiences are reacting to over-the-top gore. Fans headed to Twitter to brag about extreme reactions to the horror flick. Here's one quote. My friend passed out. I got to show you this. I gotta sh I'm sorry. I got to show you this Twitter post. It's too good. My friend passed out and the theater called an ambulance. Highly recommended. And you got there. This uh, EMTs helping this poor man out, taking him to the hospital because of this flick. <laughs> you have another person that says, quote, just saw Terrifier 2. It was an amazing, gory mess. The guy behind me passed out cold and crashed into my chair. Another guy left because he didn't feel good. <laughs> I overheard him say and walking out of the theater door, I heard a guy puking hard and loud in the bathroom. A third wrote, Terrifier 2 is so gory, I puked in my popcorn. And this is a, I believe this is a movie poster of the film itself. I'm not quite sure what exactly it's about. But if this is true, and it's actually having people have these kind of emotions, when was the last time we heard a good horror film really do this to people? I remember it was the early 90s when Scream came out. What is that, 1998, 99? Scream was a big popular flick for us, a nice little slasher. Maybe you got Michael Myers and, and Jason Voorhees, maybe, but this is a good sign for horror folks. The movie is a follow-up to the 2016 movie Terrifier about a sadistic, murderous clown named Art. It shows the creepy clown returning to terrorize a teen girl and her little brother after being resurrected by a sinister entity. Overall, audiences seem happy to be so grossed out by the film. Quote, seeing Terrifier 2 in theaters was a real trip. People in the audience were gasping, covering their eyes, and a few times I even heard retching sounds from a woman a few seats over. See, that's the ambience you want in movies with horror, right? There's a different feel when you watch it at home on your own screen by yourself or maybe with friends. But when you're in an audience, there's certain movies that are just captivating when you're around that type of atmosphere. You know, another similar type of film would have been uh, Avengers Endgame, where you're around everybody, just fans of that type of Marvel film. The energy's busting, it's bustling, it's going, and it really makes it for a fun film. In the same way for horror, if you can get that audience packed that are all there, they all are a horror community, it can make it for a really, really fun time. Quote, it's cool that a movie could still draw a reaction like that. Seems to rarely happen these days, which is what I was talking about. Last time I resemble something like that again in horror would maybe be, be um, Scream. One of the film's producers shared a warning on Twitter telling potential viewers that the film is likely to cause extreme reactions. Here's what he said. Quote, this movie contains scenes of graphic violence and brutal depictions of horror. Viewers who are faint of heart prone to lightheadedness, or have weak stomachs are advised to take extreme caution. There have already been numerous instances of fainting and vomiting in theaters. For those choosing to continue, you've been warned. <laughs> I absolutely love this. It's awesome that we're around this time where Halloween's coming up in about a week and a half, two weeks. You have horror films coming out, which is what people want. People are throwing up, fainting. That means this is probably a good flick, folks. So if I go see it, I will let you know what my review is on it. And if that's something you guys are interested in on seeing movie reviews, again, I was an actor myself, part of the Screen Actors Guild. If you want me to do reviews of movies, TV shows, and that's something you might be interested in, we could throw that on a Sunday afternoon or even a Saturday afternoon and talk about film releases because I do like movies and I do go see movies quite a bit. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. As always, support the show by hitting that like and subscribe button. And folks, I'll see you tomorrow here on The Ball Brad Show.